the ancient Egyptian civilization was established around in 3100 BC, roughly about 5,000 years ago. The civilization had their own religion, mythology and legends. One of things that the ancient Egyptians believed in was the afterlife. According to their legends the human body had a soul which they named Ka and Quat. Once a person was dead the spirit Ka would leave the body but it had the ability to posses the body once again in the afterlife, but only if the body was recognizable, which was why the preservation of the body was necessary. The historians believe that the mummification due to natural causes must have happened even before the Egyptians adopted the process into their culture. Because of the less rainfall and dry sands the bodies buried in the sand must have naturally mummified. Somehow the mummification was practiced through the entire period. According to their beliefs once the spirit possessed the body, it will need certain things to use in the afterlife. Therefore the tombs were filled with items, which they thought that the mummy would need in the afterlife. Mostly with the stuff the person used while he was alive they sometimes mummified the pets and put them beside the master in the tomb. The chief embalmer was no ordinary man, he was a priest who prepared the body for the afterlife. He would chant magical words and phrases while preparing the body. Often he would wear a mask of a jackal. When the priests received the body, they would remove brain through the nose using a hook. It was a delicate and slow process because a simple mistake could deform the face. But some historians argue that they did not pull brain matter through the nostrils. Instead, they believe that embalmers used an iron rod to liquefy the brain and the liquid was later drained through the nostrils using the gravity. Then the empty cavity was rinsed using certain drugs to remove any leftover brain matter and it helped to kill bacteria as well. Then a cut was made on the side of the body between the ribs and the hip bone to remove the internal organs. Everything was taken out except the heart. According to Egyptian beliefs the heart was considered as the center of the source of intelligence. After that the abdominal cavity was rinsed with several medicinal solutions including palm wine and fragrant herbs and spices. Then the cavity was filled with spices including myrrh, cassia. Then the body was covered in natron. Natron is a naturally occurring salt, with a mixture of sodium carbonate decahydrate, 17% sodium bicarbonate sodium sulfate and sodium chloride. The body was kept in the salt for 70 days. Historians believe that the body must be kept in the natron for 70 days, not any less or more. If it passed 70 days then the body could be too stiff to work with. If it was less than 70 days then the body could not be properly dehydrated. After 70 days the body was taken out and the spices that were placed in the body were taken out. In earlier mummies these organs were treated and preserved in separate containers called canopic jars and placed alongside of the mummy. But in later mummies the organs were treated and wrapped after taken out but placed them again in the abdominal cavity. This step led to the unused canopic jars. 
but the empty canopic jars were not removed in the process. It became an essential part in burial rituals to place empty canopic jars aside the mummy. Then the body was wrapped using hundreds of yards of linen strips. The wrapping of the body was done more delicately as the priests feared that the body could deform while wrapping it. To avoid any damage various amulets were put between the strips and prayers were written on the linen strips. The fingers and toes were wrapped separately before covering the whole foot or hand. After wrapping up, the mummy was covered using a gum-like substance. Modern research shows that this substance had the ability to waterproof the mummy and to act as an antimicrobial agent. After covering the mummy, it was handed over to the family for the further rituals. This was the most expensive method of mummification and only the richest people in the society were willing to use this method. But there was another method that mainly used by the middle class people of the society. But those families who liked to spend less on funerals did chose this method too. To empty the abdominal cavity, an oil derived from cedar trees was injected to the abdomen. To stop the oil to drain through the anus, a rectal plug was placed, then the body was covered in the natron. After the 70 days the body was taken out the and the anal plug was removed, and the liquefied organs were drained through the anus. In this method the internal organs were not preserved. To the poorer people there was another method which was almost equal to the previous method except an unnamed liquid was injected instead the cedar oil. After that the body was dehydrated in natron for 70 days. After the mummification the body was placed inside a wooden case, which was made in the shape of human body. Sometimes there could be few cases according to the social status. In some mummies of kings, there were few layers of cases were found. Some of them were decorated with gold while some were made using gold. It really depended on how much the family could afford. While these bodies were mummified their tomb was made in a different part where the mummy was to be placed. The kings build pyramids as their tombs which they filled with things to use in the afterlife. While wrapping the body with linen strips, certain amulets were kept between them. These are to protect the mummy and its human form. Each amulet had a different meaning of its own. The amulets were made from carnelian, porcelain, lapis lazuli or wood. The eye of Horus or Wayat eye was used to protect the dead from evil. The eye was crafted from lapis lazuli and plated in gold. Scarab represented the dung beetles, which would protect dead from danger in the afterlife. In ancient Egypt dung beetle was a symbol of rebirth. The amulets were placed over the mummy's heart. Another amulet was Jet, a pillar-shaped amulet. They represented the backbone of Osiris, the king of afterlife. They were placed on the mummy to strengthen the spine and to help the mummy to get up when they were posses by the Ka and Quat.
Ankh was a hieroglyph that represented life. An amulet in the shape of Ankh was placed on the mummy to give the diseased an eternal life. The buckle of the girdle of Isis was another amulet placed on the mummy, it allowed the deceased access into every part of the underworld. Canopic jars were used to store the preserved organs of the deceased. The lids of these jars were decorated with four types of heads, the four sons of Horus, the god of sky and protector of Pharaoh. Amesti was a human head, it guarded the liver. Kebhez Newt was a falcon's head and was to guard intestine. Happy was a baboon's head, he guarded the lungs. Duamuth was a jackal's head and he was to protect the stomach. They were either carved from limestones or made as a pottery. The canopic jars were placed inside a canopic chest that was buried beside the tomb. Sometimes there were inscriptions on the outer surface of these jars. After the priests began to put the preserved organs back into the body these canopic jars were buried empty.